Hi there, Daniel Park from Zebra Technologies. In this video, I'd like to introduce you to Zebra's Data Analytics Dashboard, known as Visibility IQ or VIQ. This dashboard can give you actionable insights into your mobile computers, such as how many devices do I have and how many of those are in for repair? Do I have the right amount of devices at each site? How many are out of contact and potentially lost? And where were they last seen? How often am I users rebooting the devices? Which devices need security updates? And which devices have battery issues? Now these are all important questions. Questions that need to be answered at both a site level and a fleet level. Well, with VIQ, all this and more is readily available via the VIQ dashboard. Now VIQ comes in two flavors, VIQ One Care and VIQ Foresight. VIQ One Care focuses on repair, support, contract and security patch info and comes free with your One Care service contract. On the other hand, VIQ Foresight or VIQF is a paid service that includes all the VIQ One Care components but extends upon this, providing deep insights into the operation and performance of your devices. But where do we pull the data from? While we feed in data from various sources, including the repair portal, support portal, and contract database. We also have an IoT client on our Android devices called Zebra Data Services, which sends back device level data. On top of all this, we have the ability to pull in data from an MDM, such as Soddy, AirWatch, MobileIon, etc. However, it is by no means a requirement unless you wish to gather data from non-Zebra devices or non-Android mobile computers. Now, for those familiar with VRQF already, we have some recent updates that you may be interested in. These include geolocation mapping, a new global setting to help you just focus on the device models that you're interested in, a more logical grouping of report categories, and a new landing page called the Comms Hub. We also now refresh the dashboard more often, now providing near real-time data. Okay, let's start off with an overview of the dashboard. Okay, first thing we come across is the brand new communication hub or landing page that appears in version three. Um, I can zoom in a little bit closer so we can make a bit of sense of this. Um, you can see on the top right, we have the button to launch the actual dashboard. But in this, on this screen, we have an activity feed which provides all the latest and greatest information. Um, there's some links to videos and PDFs. And there's also a, a place where you can provide feedback and ask for assistance as well. So that's new in version 3. Uh, let's jump into the dashboard by hitting Launch Dashboard. Okay, if you have more than one company or you have um, more than one um, way of representing your company, maybe there's two, two corporate names, etc. Um, this is where you'll see them. Um, I'm going to choose Demo Company 2 here for my demo. And this brings us to the main dashboard. So let's firstly look at what we see across the top. Um, in the top right, you'll see that it says US English. Uh, if I hit the drop down arrow, we see options for other languages, um, a few European languages and a couple of Asian languages. Um, where it says demo APAC sales, that is the name of the user who's logged in at the moment. Uh, this is a demo portal I'm, I'm using currently. This button is the settings. Um, where you can provide information on the user who's logged in. But um, more importantly, we can, um, well, change the settings. So we can change the date format and the time zone, etc. which is obviously you want to get the right time zone. But a new feature in version 3 is this model preference here. So this is a global setting where you can decide which models you want to have access to and visibility on over the entire dashboard. And it's just a matter of disabling the, the models that you're not interested in and then hitting apply and that will reduce um, the entire dashboard data to the models that have visibility. Okay, let me cancel out of that. Next to that is the notifications tab. Uh, there's no notifications available. This button is to provide links to various ways of getting support, 
whether it be um, repair portal or um, education, etc. Uh, again, documentation is a similar button. It takes you to videos or FAQs and some information on how the tool works. Let me just arrow back. As we move across to the right where it says partner, generally you'll probably see your company logo. Home takes you back to the comms, the com hub, I believe. Um, here you can change to different companies if you have more than one. Okay, as you can see in the main part of the screen, we have a number of tiles. Um, now these tiles can be arranged any way you want. I can click and drag a tile. Um, I could remove a tile that I'm not interested in. Just hit yes, delete the tile. Um, or I could add tiles. If it, in the right top right corner here, you can see where it says add tile. This shows tiles of all the reports that are currently available. So I can just click on any as I want and then click add to dashboard and that will add them in. Um, I'll just click off that because we've already got heaps of tiles there. Okay, let's look down the left hand side of the page. This is another way of bringing up the report. So you can either click on one of the tiles to bring up details of a report or they're actually listed down the left hand side of the page. Um, again, this is a new feature, the way they've grouped these reports. So you can see the visibility IQ one care reports are listed first um, under contract. Then there's a repair which has a one, two, three, four, five different repair reports available under repair. Case, case life cycle, whether it be RMA or support cases, and then lifeguard analytics, which tells you what OS version you're on, what lifeguard patch you're on, etc. And as you scroll down the page, you'll see we have visibility IQ foresight um, reports available. And they're categorized under device, battery, or utilization. So we open up device, you'll see a few device related reports. So total devices, devices in operation, out of contact, etc. Here's where we group all the battery related reports, critical battery events, smart battery health, battery level, etc. And utilization is the last tab, which opens up into application analytics, device disruptions, utilizing right sizing, um, scan metrics, etc. So it's it's just organized a little bit more logically on the left here. But of course, you can click and drag any tile you want. So you can just put the reports that are, are of interest to you front and um, top so they're easily accessible. Another new feature of version 3 is this geolocations tab here. So let's click on that quickly. This will bring up a map of the world and it will highlight where your, your devices are. Well, actually, any device that provides GPS coordinates, it will show those devices. Um, how it's represented on the map is you will see a little red logo when there's one device in that area. If you see a blue circle and a number inside, that means there's multiple devices in that area and you need to zoom in to, to break down into the individual components. So um, as I'm zooming in there, you'll see near Kansas City. Okay, well, Kansas City's got one unit there. Um, as you zoom out, you'll see that they'll bunch up and, and become blue icons when there's more than one. So you can see there's two units in Denver, um, and if you zoom in, they'll break out into individual units. Okay, and then for, last but not least is the administration section. And I will go through that a little bit later, but this is where you set up um, settings for your individual reports. So you can change um, thresholds, etc., cetera, to um, something that's more appropriate to your use case. Um, you can set up email notifications, and you can assign your uh, users, whether it be yourself or others, to a particular sites within your organization. So it's something I'll come back to later. But that, um, I guess, in a nutshell, is the main dashboard area. Well, that's it for this video. Please keep an eye out for part two, where we will look a little deeper into how to view reports and how to set thresholds. Now, remember, if you would like any more information on anything you've seen here, please reach out to your local Zebra team or visit zebra.com. Thanks for watching.